Chris, good to have you in rugby tonight. Um, unfortunately, you, you are injured. How is the injury and when do we look forward to seeing you back on the pitch? Uh, yeah, it's getting there. Um, I've started returning to rugby this week, so hopefully next week I'll, uh, I'll be up for selection, um, if not the week after. So, But I think when you're injured, it's, it's about trying to keep yourself kind of motivated and, and keep yourself busy off the pitch because you do all the physio and rehab and it's actually a, a time when a lot of players do get depressed and they do get frustrated because things aren't improving. So. So you've kept yourself busy off the pitch, haven't you? What have you been Yeah, up so look, I've, I've got some business interests I've done and I've always tried to, to keep involved and stuff. And, and for me, I've, I've always wanted to do stuff. I remember when I was about 20 years old in the RPA, the player union at the time, uh, were all very much about getting players out there doing something. And I was like, OK, I'll give it a go. And Coca-Cola. So Coca-Cola had got in touch with the, the RPA and I was, available. I was like, this is gonna this is gonna be brilliant, you know, I'm going to Coca-Cola headquarters, I'm gonna be working with the CEO, the MDs, all this stuff. So as a young 20-year-old, I put my best suit on, tie, I was suiting and booted as I was. Got there thinking this is gonna be brilliant. I spent a day in the warehouse moving Coca-Cola around. <laughs> <laughs> so, all experience. Exactly, it's yes, experience, but yeah, I got uh, I got a bit of stick when I got back and told all the lads what I'd been doing. <laughs> Um, not quite with the MD. So when, you, kill, when you finish, are you going to move Coke around? Well, it's always an option. I've got the experience now. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll tell you what else you've been doing. You've been doing a bit of media, doing some articles. One I particularly enjoyed, Chris Robshaw, was for GQ magazine, where you were talking about your beauty regime. And I quote, <laughs> I love this. My routine makes me feel ready to attack the day. It also allows me to look semi-sharp. Just out of the bed, look, doesn't just happy. Happen, Happen even. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, I wrecked it. <laughs> right. It didn't have the effect I wanted. I, I like, particularly like that. Yeah, look, I, th I think for myself, I, I always <laughs> want to challenge myself and I always want to grow and, and put yourself into potentially environments where you're not naturally comfortable with. Um, and I think that, that's, for me, doing stuff like that is a way of challenging myself to, to try and improve and try and further yourself. Because like you said, you, you never know where, you, where you're going to end up, what you're going to do post-rugby and stuff. So look, I very much enjoy it. Um, and hopefully there'll be a bit more stuff like that. I Have you used that. the hairdryer on that lid tonight? Of course, <laughs> always. <laughs> Good man, OK, let's get back to rugby. You've had a phenomenal <laughs> career, you really have. 66 England caps, you're the second most capped England captain, which I think actually deserves a massive round of applause. <laughs> Quite generous, that. Um, but I guess in sport, that you get massive highs, you get massive lows. Let's talk about some of the highs that you've had. You know, what are the what are the best moments that you've had in an English shirt? Yeah, I've, look, obviously the the first game, um, I've been capped over in Argentina. I think you may have been there. Yeah, 2002. Yeah. yeah. God, you're not as old as you think you are, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Was Ben playing? I think you were playing. Oh know. no, I was. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was <laughs> um, but yeah, then. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Um, but then, yeah, captain in England for the first time against Scotland, uh, beating New Zealand at Twickenham. Um, yeah, definitely one. I remember that, that game and kind of everyone after the game was going pretty mad and we were lucky that we had Manny Tuolangi, I think, on our side that day because that day he was, he was incredible. He was running over, over people, intercepting balls, yeah. um, smashing people and he was brilliant. I was really interested, again, reading, I've been doing my research. Um, one of your oh, kind beauty of most... magazines, is it? Ben, yeah, <laughs> beauty beauty magazine, question. pretty much. <laughs> um, but no, this is, this is a more rugby related question. Um, that one of your kind of, I don't know, most memorable moments in the rugby field was uh, when you beat Wales after losing to them in, in the World Cup. Just, just tell us about that because I was reading that you couldn't physically almost get off the field because you were so emotional. Yeah, very much so. And look, it was um, look, the World Cup didn't didn't go how we had planned, unfortunately. And it was a, a tough time for myself and the, and a lot of people. There was a massive fallout on the back of it, and um, there was a lot of uncertainty. There was a lot of he heat on certain people and stuff. Was that the year that you wouldn't come out of the changing rooms? No, no, no. The right. post World Cup, the first oh, right. back at Twickenham. So I enjoyed that one. Oh, and then no, we, that's my favourite. Yeah. <laughs> no, not coming out till they come out. <laughs> but then, yeah, we we played. Um, Played Wales um, and beat them and almost lost actually at the end. Unfortunately, we we're doing a lap of honour and I just couldn't couldn't hold it in. I had to go in the change room. I just just broke down. I think just emotionally it had uh, just all kind of come out. I think um, and the players were brilliant around me. Uh, Paul Gossard as well and just just being there for people. I think was was kind of hugely important. Um, but yeah, that was definitely that. And then beating Australia that summer, uh, winning my 50th in that. Uh, being presented by Jason Lennon was definitely kind of closure on that chapter for me. Um, I think the World Cup is a scar I'll always wear um, and always be part of me, but that was definitely a year to, 
to help me get over it. How long did it take to kind of get over it, I guess, that whole, whole World Cup experience? <clears throat> Uh, look, I don't think you'll ever be, be fully over it. You learn to learn to move forward. Uh, but like I said, probably that that Australia game, that Wales moment was extremely significant. I was, uh, I mean, Hugo was with me at the club and stuff at the time. It was a, it was a dark time for myself at the club, at home, whatever. Uh, but it was my wife and my friends and my family, teammates. Connor was brilliant with me um, about just looking after you. I remember kind of post post World Cup actually. My wife kind of arranged for my best friends and we went away to a house and just ate and drank until we probably couldn't remember. <laughs> and it probably wasn't the, the best thing to do, but it was, it was just good just to get away from it for a little bit. Um, and then that, it took a bit of time, but I think that Australia game was definitely, yeah, you know what, you feel good again. Yeah, I was absolutely thrilled. I know the game you're talking about, because I remember sitting down and chatting with you after you'd been away for a weekend and just to see the impact it has, not just on... Chris could have been anyone, but when he, when he is your friend and you're so close to it, then it makes it that much harder to deal with. But looking forward, this year is an absolutely huge year. There's a World Cup in Japan and you've, you've come out and spoken about your want and everyone's desires to go to the World Cup, but that will feel as if that you can hopefully avenge some redemption on what happened in 2015. Do you just want to elaborate a bit? Yeah, look, very much so. Look, we all, we all think we've got points to prove in terms of that, yeah. to right a few wrongs. Um, there's a lot of rugby to be played and hopefully I can fight my way back into the side and try to get back in there. And Look, England are going in the right direction. I think this year's Six Nations is going to be brilliant, isn't it? You've got three teams in the top four world rankings um, and then the World Cup's just going to be brilliant. 